Hey, this is Matt. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, where I want to share with you one amazing hair transformation of a Norwood 6 who had additional scalp micropigmentation, another type of cosmetic procedure that some guys can opt for if they cannot have a hair transplant for whatever reason or don't want to have a hair transplant or wear a hair system. That was the case with this guy as well until his family and his girlfriend asked him to have hair again. I don't know why. And this was the time when this guy realized that his hair on the sides and back is hiding some secret treasures. And all the guys that have been following my channel will probably know what that treasure will be. The new guys that don't know, you will see in this video. Make sure to smash that like button right now in this very moment before we proceed with the video in case you are enjoying these regular hair loss, hair transplant related updates from me. And before we start, this video has been brought to you by GoFiber, which are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice from them and try them out. See if you like them. Hey, welcome back to the channel once again. My name is Matt and I'm your host on this channel. I'm talking about things like hair loss management, reversing your hair loss, growing that hair back, thickening that hair, and eventually getting your hair back via hair transplant. In case you have tried for some time, manage your hair loss with minoxidil, with finasteride, with the proven treatments, and eventually getting to that final push and get your hair onto the next level with a hair transplant, how to maximize your hair transplant result, hair transplant success, and all that. Find out on this channel channel. That's why you should subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. All right, let's start with the reaction to this video because it's another uh, hair loss, I guess, hair transplant related channel in Spanish. And he made a nice, very detailed reaction video to this guy's case. So I would just react to it. And I will also leave the audio in Spanish running just in case some of my subscribers who are Spanish speakers can understand. So let's start with the video. Y obviamente él había perdido un poco difuminada la parte adelante, ya él no se veía bien, no se veía natural. Okay, so we see this guy, that's the Norwood 6 guy, you will see later. Uh, this is his scalp micropigmentation look. Obviously, he has done it probably several several years ago already. We see that it's already faded a little and we see that it's quite aggressive and it's framing his uh, forehead quite uh, tight on the corners and the hairline as well. Esto es una locura porque si ven all right, so he goes to a hair transplant doctor and he suggests him like, hey, if you want to have a good hair transplant result, something that will look natural, you need to get rid of the two, uh, first two centimeters of your pigmentation, uh, pigmentation line. Many guys are asking if it's painful or not. And yes, it, it can be painful by, by some guys more, by some guys who are less sensitive, I guess less, but there is a lot of heat being applied and also cool, additional cooling apply, applied, as you can see it here. Because the laser is additionally providing a lot of heat to that area and uh, that's why uh, the cooling is required for a better comfort during this uh, uh, graft or hair removal session with a laser. This is how his forehead looks like after first uh, session of uh, laser removal and we can still see some pigment, especially the lines which still need to be removed with the second session. Yeah, here we can already see that the lines are way less obvious and uh, probably there's gonna be one last session. Uh, I think uh, the guy in the video mentioned that this guy had done third laser removal session because we can still see some lines on his forehead even after two sessions. We can see that his hairline is hair transplant ready and it's already two centimeters higher than it originally was set with the pigmentation. So the doctor is much more willing to uh, do a hair restoration on such a patient. And I see this a mistake uh, sometimes, uh, especially by clinics who are less experienced. Guys come there with previously done hair uh, 
uh, pigmentations and their hairlines are ridiculously low and what the clinic does they don't really suggest that patient to have it uh, removed first and then come back but they just do it and they just copy the line and this is a big mistake because uh, this is a very short-term result it's not going to produce long-lasting result because the hair on the back and uh, mid scalp is going to recede further and the guy will be left with an island of hair five ten years down the road unfortunately okay so be aware of that here we can see that it's very important for this patient to get on medication as soon as possible because I presume that he stopped or never used medication prior to this point since he was like a Norwood 6 he was just losing hair for all of his life up to this point he got the pigmentation so there was no reason for him really to keep his hair because he probably thought that he will never have his hair back again until right now so it's going to be very important for him to get on medication like finasteride to keep the lateral humps we can see that his donor area looks okay uh, considering he has never used probably medication it just naturally gradually thinning so hopefully this patient will get on medication and hopefully he will respond very well to it so he can thicken also that upper region here aquí la primera operación lo que podemos ver incluso es toda esta zona ya el primer día terminado vemos esta zona all right, so he's pretty much saying that the transplant was done in two days. During the first day, they did the hairline, as you can see here. They put uh, like one, two, maybe three rows of single grafts. I hope they are single grafts, they should be. Based on this photo, I actually think that these should be only single grafts because if you uh, take a look here, they're, they're not surrounded by a lot of scabs like uh, you know the when the uh, blood dries you know it forms crusts and stuff like that and usually the incisions which are made for single grafts are very slim very narrow and uh, that results or should result result normally in less bleeding and uh, lesser scab formation eventually unlike the uh, forelock zone here uh, which uh, already has much more you know scabby or crusty areas because in this area they doctors usually place like doubles triples and multiples which require bigger or larger incisions and that results in more bleeding and that's why you can see more scab formation uh, and crust formation over here so I think it should be singles uh, all that in the first maybe two rows of the hairline so so far so good okay so first day of extraction they focused on the occipital region solely i don't know whether they used a manual or motorized extraction it's hard to tell just from looking at the donor as it is here yeah so they are extending the extraction zones towards the left and right parietal zones here we can see that the punches are a little bit larger on some areas and tinier on other areas that's because if the doctor wants to extract like a multiple follicle like triple and a quadruple graft then uh, obviously the extraction hole will have to be larger compared to when he wants to extract a single graft it looks like a homogeneous extraction from here this is the amount of grafts or follicular units that this guy got transplanted it was 3517 and it's gonna be transplanted on this area right here why am i not surprised spanish guys spanish guys 2.82 like a wonderful hair graft average that means that out of each graft that had been uh, extracted from the donor in this case 3500 of them uh, each of the each of these grafts produces on average 2.8 hairs that means that this guy is gonna end up with 9917 hairs transplanted assuming all of them will survive obviously not all of them will survive but still that's a really good hair per graft average here you can see after 13 days that the micropigmentation that the pigment is still kind of uh, uh, very visible and it's gonna definitely add some nice boost to the overall result you will see even if the density may not be so high uh, it's gonna look pretty full I'm sure uh, eventually and you will see that oh this is the second month mark guys almost all of the transplanted hair fell out okay 
So uh, that's definitely what can happen. And in fact, there is only like 5% or even less of overall hair transplant patients who don't shed at all, who are not experiencing this post-operative transplanted hair shedding. And you can't really avoid it, right? You can only slightly minimize it with some things. All right, guys, this is the third month mark and we can already see how this guy's growing hair. Like literally, look at that. It's This guy's definitely an early grower. I think because the third month mark and we can already see like more than 30% of uh, the transplanted hair being sprouted. That's definitely more than 30%. And it, it doesn't always apply that like th three months, 30%, four months, 40%, uh, you know, 12 months or 10 months, 100%. It sometimes can be that by the third, fourth month mark, you can already have like 50% growth, really. It sometimes happens fast if these guys start growing that hair too soon or by the third month mark is already like that. Un lateral, otro lateral a cinco meses, zona donante, bueno, fotos aquí un poquito, pues, de... This is still fifth month mark, guys. It's really good. It's really good. Te manda él, primero, pues, aquí, pelo mojado, directamente. Vean como aquí, otra vez, la micromimitación. This is the 12th month mark, by the way. Hairline looks natural, uh, pretty soft, and uh, I don't see, I see occasional multiples in the hairline, but it's not, they're not occurring there regularly, which makes it more random looking and natural looking. Yeah, some doubles uh, can occur in the hairline as long as they're like 90% singles, especially in the first uh, two rows of the hairline, then it's fine. And I like it really, it's looking very good. That's looking good. Together with the pigmentation, obviously, come on, is this 3,500 grafts? Like this guy's coming from this and this is completely bald. The area we just outlined with uh, these blue lines, it's like completely nothing to this. Wow, 12 months. We see so many good things. We see hypergraft average. We see uh, darker hair, which is kind of starting to curl a little bit after a while. We see probably has also above average hair thickness, hair shaft thickness, which doesn't require the doctor to dance back so much. Maybe go more conservative, you know, 40 grafts per square centimeter, and it can already look, look very full and dense. He has so many great properties for a great hair transplant candidate, even despite being Norwood 6 to begin with, guys. That's great. He's probably showing that some areas could have uh, grown better, uh, but nonetheless, with the pigmentation underneath, it's looking great. But yeah, probably there still is something that will be uh, will need to be filled out with the second session. Uh, here we can also see that the scalp micropigmentation line underneath is visible and the pigmentation can be visible but on the other hand it also adds a nice frame to that result and without that pigmentation it would have looked a little bit more sparse on the on the edge here and i think it actually looks pretty nice here if he's worried about this uh, pigmentation uh, or pigment being very visible underneath the hairline he can always add more density to the hairline with uh, new grabs uh, during the second session, maybe he's gonna do it. But look at that coverage, even from this side. I mean, come on, it's looking so good for 3,500 grafts only. No es el mismo. Este tío tiene una donante mejor que cuando empezó. Si vamos al principio de la operación wow. antes de su primera cirugía. All right, guys, I need to stop it here because this is something very important that this guy is trying to discuss here. And it's the donor area on the left. It's the donor area before 3,500 grafts had been extracted. And on the right, it's after. Like, it looks better on the photo on the right, despite 3,500 grafts had been removed. And the reason of that is that obviously the extraction had been done homogeneously, which is great. But on top of that, the patient started with medication, with finasteride, which improved the appearance of this area visually. It thickened that hair, it darkened that hair, and that was exactly something that I was curious about uh, before, if he's gonna respond uh, well to the medication. But as you see here, he's, uh, he's an excellent responder on top, on top of the top of him being a great candidate and having all these great properties in his donor. He's also a good responder uh, to medication, which is great to see. So don't just neglect the medication part just because you are already Norwood 5 or Norwood 6 and you just wanna get, you know, that hair 
extract it as much as you can and place it on top, you still need medication before to make it even more optimal, not just for thickening that donor, but also uh, preserving your transplanted hair once it's gonna be implanted with the medication. All right, so this is the area shaved after 12 months, or I think 12 months, and this is gonna be a second hair transplant. Let's take a look at the design. I think he really wants to add uh, or have more hair added to the exact to the left area where the pigment pigment was seen more as we were uh, able to see so he really wants to add more hairs to this uh, so the pigment will not be seen underneath so that's all right he's also strengthening that area here which is also smart because he probably wants to comb that hair from left to right so if he strengths strengthens this area with more grafts he can then comb it over like that and uh, make it look visually thicker and that's a smart decision and smart use of grafts instead of just randomly placing them all over here you know and focusing on coverage he tries to focus more on this area so that's good if you already know how you want to wear your hair how what a hairstyle you want to have after the transplant you can allocate uh, these grafts or have them allocated by the doctor more uh, in a more clever way and obviously the crown area will be done as well so let's take a look at it I think they did the crown first and the second day as you can see here they did a portion of the mid scalp and also added more density to the left side of his hairline. Oh, 2300. So overall, this guy already got 5800 grafts. No way! No way! This guy got 2.9 hair per graft average with the second surgery. Oh my god, this is so good. That makes it how many hairs? My god, I need to calculate it. So this guy got 16,587 hairs already with his both procedures, 5,817 grafts. Wonderful. This is a great, great hair per graft average uh, for two sessions. So again, this is the month by month progress. After the second operation, I'm just going to skip through it. Uh, we can see that his donor is looking pretty nice. He's shaving his donor or getting a fade. That's interesting. Let's stop it maybe here. Uh, so I think it's here. We can see these white dots, you know, uh, maybe a sign of a slight hypopigmentation. Obviously, if you are somebody with darker skin, uh, the hypopigmentation can be more obvious if you shave that donor as you we have seen with LeBron James and if you are Caucasian with uh, you know uh, pale skin then the potential for hyperpigmentation as a result of FUE a scarring is very very low here it's manageable it's nothing uh, out of the ordinary the white dots I was just talking about are going to be most apparent in this region here because uh, as we have seen uh, where they were extracting the grafts uh, there were a lot of multiples especially in this zone so it's going to look more apparent especially the white dots after doubles and triples and multiples they're going to be the largest ones because the doctor also needs to of course use a larger punch to uh, safely extract the graft if he wants to like avoid the potential transaction so the larger punch will cause slightly larger uh, dot but only if the patient obviously shaves the side. If he uh, lets the hair grow longer, it's not going to be so apparent. This is three months. Okay, we see that the donor, the hair on the donor is already growing nicely. Five months, guys. Looking pretty damn thick. Pretty damn thick. This was good. This was six month result and the crown already looks pretty nice. Wow. This is five months, guys. This is awesome. Guys, seven months. This guy was a Norwood six. Looked like that. This is the month number nine. And this is would be like the official full result after 12 months after his second surgery. Uh, although the hair growth on the crown can still uh, be noticeable after 12 months, but on the mid scalp and here on the left portion of the hairline, it's probably already uh, full. It's already done with the growth. And uh, yeah, this guy can be really happy. What else should I say, guys? What else should I say? And you know, when somebody has a great hair quality, when you just brush it to the side and it just 
goes back again it's just so wild and it just so just it doesn't want to stay in one place it just has that volume and strength and thickness and you can see it on this very well when he just combs that hair and the hair is just gonna go right back it's just like so thick. In conclusion, I would say that this is probably one of the best Norwood 6 hair transplant candidates I have seen in a very, very long time. And I'm sure that many of the hair transplant doctors themselves would probably agree if I say that out of several thousand hair transplant patients that a usual hair transplant doctor operates on, there are a handful of patients like that. There are of course many guys who can come close to them, but also many guys who are just average hair transplant candidates or even below average. So which one are you? Maybe you are interested in a hair transplant, maybe you have been following my channel for a long time and you wanna discuss that with an expert, somebody who knows what he's talking about, somebody who has seen hundreds and thousands of cases and somebody who can guide you throughout your hair transplant decision. And here on the left, you can see what I'm usually discussing with guys who are interested in a hair transplant via one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, sessions with me, which is a video call that I'm doing on a weekly basis. And there's a link in the description below where you can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me where I can help you out with your hair transplant research. I can uh, share with you things that you should pay attention to, things that you will maximize your hair transplant success and things that will most likely minimize your hair transplant success. There's also a Facebook group, Hair Transplant Experience, Experiences, which you should definitely be a member of if you are not yet. It has 3,400 members, guys who are interested in a hair transplant, probably like you, yourself, so make sure you join the group. Uh, you can support my channel by visiting my website and getting one of my hair transplant related guides on how to research your hair transplant doctor properly, how to find the best clinics in Turkey. I have a guide on that. So make sure you visit mattdominance.com where you can get some help. And of course, my free ebook, Five Things I Wished I Had Known Before My Hair Transplant, which can start your hair transplant research the proper way. All right, thank you very much for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. And I'm gonna be here very soon with another video on hair loss or hair transplant. Take care, guys.